I'm Ralph Preston. William Lowe and I are here again. And tonight's roadmap segment is going to be on wheelchair exercises. Um, wheelchair exercises are pretty important, especially if you're currently kind of stuck in one because you want to get out. And uh, if you're not standing and walking and doing things that, uh, with um, more mobility, you've got to... Um, uh, do movement uh, from your chair. So uh, there's lots of things that you can do in your wheelchair and uh, you shouldn't uh, let uh, the fact you're thinking about the fact you're in a wheelchair limit you in terms of uh, your recovery because you can get on it right away. Uh, it was one of the things I started before I even got into phys physical therapy. Uh, so, William, I, didn't, I know you had some thoughts on this that you were going to start us off with. So why don't you go ahead and take it away? Uh, yeah, sure. So, I mean, first, I just want to second what you said about wheelchair exercise, wheelchair exercises um, in recovery after stroke. I think they're paramount because especially, um, and I think every stroke survivor, they might resonate with this. Um, whenever you have a stroke, when you first have your stroke, everyone essentially starts off in the wheelchair because they've lost their ability to walk and they're trying to, and essentially the end goal is to teach yourself how to walk again so that you can get out of hospital and so you can get out of a wheelchair. And so I'm a huge advocate of wheelchair exercises because especially in the early days of your recovery after stroke, when you're spending so much time in a wheelchair, you can actually use this time to actually capitalize on the opportunity to actually recover because you can actually do some exercises while you're seated in a wheelchair, which can essentially help teach your brain how to connect the dots and learn how to walk a lot better. And the reason behind this is because if you're trying to teach your brain how to walk while you're attempting to walk, it can, it can actually increase the risk of falling and it can also increase the risk of compensation, which is the reason why you see a lot of stroke survivors whenever they're walking, they're very scared because they find that their knee might hyperextend. And this actually most of the time leads to a fall. Another thing we see is that when stroke survivors try to walk while standing up is that whenever they try to lift up their leg, they end up turning on too much too much of their entire body to lift up their leg, but they end up heaving their leg forward whenever they walk. And essentially in the long term, this results in a gait, which is not, which, which, which some people describe as themselves walking as if they're drunk or walking as if they're a penguin. Um, so the reason why wheelchair exercises are so good is that you can actually teach your brain how to isolate some of the muscles which are used when you're when you're walking upright so that's when you're trying to walk upright outside of a wheelchair because you've already strengthened these muscles while sitting down in the wheelchair you essentially will be able to walk a lot better and with a lot more ease so i think i think in general what what ralph and i wanted to cover in this uh roadmap segment is why it's important to keep in mind the importance of wheelchair exercise and how wheelchair exercises can actually help you speed up your recovery after stroke, especially if you're in the early days of your of your recovery and you've just had your stroke and you're stuck in the hospital and you're trying to think of things you could do, additional things you could do to get the ball rolling in your recovery, especially if you're trying to teach yourself how to learn how to walk and actually get out of the wheelchair, unless you're a fan of staying in a wheelchair for the rest of your recovery. So. Having said that, uh, what I want to talk about is some of the exercises which you could you could actually do while you're sitting down in a wheelchair to actually get the most out of your recovery after stroke. Now, earlier I mentioned that it's actually a lot easier to target some of the muscles while sitting down in a wheelchair because one, you you actually reduce the risk of falling. Um, you can't go anywhere if you're actually seated down in the wheelchair. And number two, the reason why wheelchair exercises are so powerful is because they actually stop your brain from actually cheating by turning on too many muscles upstairs in order to actually get your walking going. 
when you're in an upright position and you're trying to walk while standing up, you might find that you're heaving, heaving your leg forward and you're lifting up your hip a little bit too much because your body is trying to, sorry, your brain is trying to compensate by using a lot of your your lower trunk in order to get the uh, leg moving forward. When you're sitting down in a wheelchair, you can't do this as much. So essentially, you can actually teach your brain how to turn on the correct muscle in a more accurate manner so that when it comes to actually standing up, you can send that signal a lot a lot more smooth and you're actually able to turn on that muscle a lot more accurately rather than turning on more muscles than is necessary to lift up your leg so that when it comes to walking, you'll find that you're not lifting up your entire hip in order to heave your leg forward, but rather you're actually lifting up your leg uh, straight forward and you're, you're using, you're not using more brain power than is actually required, just like before you had your stroke. So one of the exercises which I would, which, which I'm a huge advocate of in terms of wheelchair exercises are just your basic marching exercises. And when I say marching, what I mean by this is basically just being seated in a wheelchair and just lifting up one leg and, and the other leg at the same time. And basically what this does is this actually mimics, this actually mimics the action which you would take when you're actually uh, walking, because what you're doing is you're lifting up one hip, sorry, not one hip, but one leg after another, as if you're walking. And you're strengthening up these muscles, which are called your hip flexors, which play a important role when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, taking the first step, whenever you're teaching your brain how to walk whilst, while standing up. So I'm a huge advocate of squats. And if you're in the, uh, early days of your recovery after stroke, I would highly recommend these as, like I said, they're strengthening up the, your hip flexors, which are a, uh, which, which are a very important muscle when it comes to teaching your brain how to walk again. And, and so now that we've covered uh, marching, the next exercise I wanted to talk about is, is, is plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. Now, in a seated position, it's actually a lot easier to, to, to target some of the muscles in your ankle, which, which, are, which are especially important when it comes to walking. So when it comes to walking, generally speaking, your leg or your ankle needs to dorsiflex or move up like this whenever your heel strikes the ground. And when you're taking that second step, your, your ankle or your foot needs to actually push off which is basically the opposite action, which is plantar flexion. So that's 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 when your feet go down. Now, along with the uh, squats, you can also practice these ankle exercises sitting down. And while sitting down, it's actually a lot easier to actually target these muscles um, without cheating that much, without cheating or, or compensating. And the reason why this works is because you're using the weight of your body to force your ankle muscles to actually turn on and your and the weight of your body actually makes it a lot easier to actually lift up your ankles in this position rather than if you were to do it standing up when it's almost impossible and you don't quite yet have that control yet especially in the early days of your recovery so so ankle exercises are another exercise which you can do while sitting down in a wheelchair and additionally if you if if these are too advanced for you and you want to have a more isolated version of this, you can actually implement the use of a band to actually teach your brain how to uh, to actually teach your brain how to strengthen up some of those individual ankle muscles. So, Ralph, perhaps you could uh, perhaps you could use a band and you could show um, all of the folks watching how you could use a band to actually strengthen up some of the muscles in your ankle which you use to walk. So here we have Ralph, and he's going to demonstrate how to strengthen up your plantar flexors which are basically the muscles in your ankle, which you use to push off whenever you take a step um, so that when it comes to walking, you, what you'll find is that you'll be able to walk with a lot more ease and, and your gait should be a little bit smoother because you can transition a lot easier from one, one foot to another foot. Quite, quite, quite often when people have dropped foot, it's because it's, it's, it's because, uh, 
It's because they don't have enough plantar flexion or or they're not able to activate their dorsiflexes enough so that they can actually clear the ground at the same time. So these are all good variations of exercise you can do uh, while you're seated down in the wheelchair. And I hope by just seeing that demonstration by Ralph uh, right there that that all of you watching, you can uh, have a have a really good understanding of how versatile wheelchair exercises are, well, exercises in the wheelchair are, and how these can be extremely beneficial for your recovery after stroke, especially in the early days when you're trying to teach your brain how to connect the dots and learn how to walk again independently so that you can obviously leave the wheelchair and you can leave the hospital as soon as possible. So, so that's basically everything I have to say um, about wheelchair exercises, um, but I'm pretty sure I can come up with more. But for now, uh, Ralph, you and I, we had a discussion earlier about wheelchair exercises and obviously uh, your, your experiences with them. Um, just wanted to know, um, did you have any thoughts or thoughts that you wanted to share with all the uh, folks watching? Sure. Um, yeah, when I work with people, they're often we they start in a wheelchair. So, you know, one of the things that I always try and do is um, get them moving. Um, this doesn't relate to walking. I've talked about a couple of things that don't relate to walking. Then we'll get back to walking. One of the simplest things you want you can do is you want to get the shoulder going. Is you can take your unaffected hand. And you can put it behind your elbow. If you put it out here, you'll just bend your arm. You don't want to do that. You want to come up above your elbow so that when you lift it, you're lifting, changing this angle. So you can start to get, you can push up with this hand. I'm doing nothing. I'll do nothing with my affected hand. I'm doing it all with my unaffected hand. So that's a way to get some movement going in your shoulder. When we're doing the um, plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, uh, there are two ways of doing it. Uh, I showed them both. If you put your heels on the ground and you push down, that's plantar flexion. If you pull back, it's dorsiflexion. I also did it where I put my feet flat and I lifted my heels up and put them down or lifted my toes up. You lift your toes up, that's dorsiflexion. When you lift your heels up, it's plantar flexion. So there's a lot of different ways to do them. Uh, when you were talking about ankle exercises, I also did um, one other one. I don't know if I did it as eversion. You basically turn your feet out. It's a good ankle exercise. All the ankle exercises are good. I also drew some circles in both directions with my ankles. I did not demonstrate what I think is the best ankle exercise, which is... Um, Drawing the alphabet, either in midair or on the ground or even on the wall with your big toe, because it involves, you know, making like a C is very different than making an A and involves a lot of different uh, muscles. Uh, let's see, what else can you do? I mean, there's hundreds of things you can do. I mean, we do chair yoga every week. So, you know, there's things like... Um, you know, one of the a good one of the good stretches is figure four, and you can lift it up and rock it. Uh, we do a lot of um, in yoga, and I, I take a, a chair yoga. And a lot of times in yoga, we're doing things like um, we're twisting. We're not turning our hips; we're turning our body. So um, one of the things you can do is just rotate. I had a lot of trouble with my neck. So you rotate and then you touch your chin to your shoulders. You can put your head down and look up. You can give it a little extra twist around. So, and anything you do where you're moving your core is good. There are lots of things that you can do in the wheelchair for core stuff. Stuff like candlestick, where you lean one way and lean the other way. Anytime you're moving a uh, forward fold, when you do a forward fold, you got to be careful because you can go right out of the wheelchair. So you might want to put your hands on your knees. So when you fold forward, you got something you can stop yourself with. So just be folding forward, 
gravity is doing most of the work there. But what you do is a nice slow up and you're engaging that core. I can feel it. Um, so there's just all, all kinds of things that, um, that you can do. I actually have, a, I'll, I'll post some in the comments on this video. Actually, I work with somebody who um, needed to do some wheelchair core exercises. And a friend of mine, Michelle Jensen, had a series going. And uh, so I was actually in person with this person. And we tried to do them. And they were too difficult for her. She didn't have any real core uh, or trunk strength. So uh, I adapted all of them. I'll put, I'll put them down. There's six wheelchair exercises. And I've linked them back to Michelle's six. So once you get some control, um, you can go do the, the full exercise. So they're all adapted. For example, you know, one thing you can do with a pendulum, you put your hands up over your head and you lean. What happened with, with her was she leaned and the only thing that kept her from falling on the floor was the arm of the wheelchair. So... What we did was we just put our hands on our lap or in neutral and you lean. And then if you want to get more weight involved, you can put your hands on your head and eventually put them all the way up. So they're all adapted and uh, I'll put them uh, underneath. Also, I have videos on all the different ankle exercises we talked about, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, leg lifts, toe lifts, eversion, drawing the alphabet. Uh, circles, um, all that stuff. Um, there's also bunches of other stuff you can do uh, upper body wise. One thing you can do is start, if you're doing anything, uh, you can start introducing some light weights. I'm not a big believer in that's a one pound weight. This is a two pound weight. These are kind of good because if you use them in your affected hand, you have to hold on to them and not drop them. Always a good thing. Uh, I'm a big believer in repetitions more than weights. So, uh, but weights have their place. Uh, let's see what else we got. I've got found some things around the house. There's always something around the house, like a dowel. That's a that's a sawed down broom handle. That's an axe handle. That's a piece of one by two. These are just things I find around my house. That's a piece of molding that I cut off to put my new refrigerator in and make the slot bigger. And then here's my favorite, my dowel that helped me get my arm back. There's just so much you can do with a dowel in a wheelchair because, well, first you have to get your hand going so you can hold on to it. And one of the things you can do in the wheelchair is you can do all your hand exercises. Um, so, you know, there's just uh, so much you can do. So many people say, I'm in a wheelchair, I can't do anything. We can do all your OT, you can do upper body stuff, you can work on isolating muscles for walking, uh, you can work on your core, core is key to walking. So, um, you know, to me, there's just a bunches of stuff you can do. Um, and the, you know, point is, as always, to, um, Get moving and stay moving. So, you know, when I was waiting for physical therapy to call me, I started uh, doing what I could in the wheelchair, doing one thing we didn't mention was sit to stand. Sit to stands are real good, uh, especially if you want to eventually walk and get out of the wheelchair. So, you know, basically it's a squat. You know, you're squatted and you stand up. And sit back down and practice those. If you can, can stand up and sit down 10 times, you're going to you're gonna be pretty close to being able to get a walker or some kind of assistive device and friend with a gate belt, what, whatever you're going to use to uh, steady yourself and start thinking about putting one foot in front of the other. So I'm sure there's more, but that's a... That, covers a wide range of um, stuff that um, I've done and recommend uh, and shown other people how to do that I work with. So anything else you got, William? Uh, well, I mean, 
I mean, I just want to add on to, I mean, obviously, look, everything everything Ralph has said is uh, really important and I agree with it 100%. Um, I think I think the one of the most important things uh, with wheelchair exercises is just like how Ralph and I were talking about the other week about the bed exercises. You can see the common theme. You can see the common theme with these last two roadmaps is that you've got to maximize as many opportunities you have to work work on your affected side and get back as much recovery as possible in the early days of your recovery after stroke. Because in the first six months, that's when your neuroplasticity is the strongest and that's when you're able to see the most changes. What, what I think is really important to remember is that your muscles are going to weaken quite quickly in your recovery after stroke if you don't give them attention. And I think... The reason why wheelchair exercises and bed exercises are so good is you're essentially stopping your brain from getting lazy and getting comfortable, and you're trying to you're trying to preserve some of that strength that you had in the early days of your stroke before your stroke, um, so that later down the line you don't find yourself in a position where all your, all your muscles are tightened up, and it's almost impossible to actually get back some improvement or even try to attempt to learn how to walk. So by doing these bed exercises or wheelchair exercises and taking advantage of all of these opportunities you have to recover, what Ralph and I are basically doing is we're, we're hoping that we're setting you up for success so that you can get the ball rolling in your recovery. And when you do run out of support or when you do run out of insurance and you're discharged from the hospital, then when you go home, you're your journey to recovery is actually a lot easier because you've done all the, the because you've done all the hard work and you've laid down the foundations early on when it was a lot easier to see changes and it was a lot easier to get back that strength which you previously had before your stroke and that in turn makes it a lot easier to see more changes and improvements in your recovery which will set you up for success in the long term so i guess I guess that's that's the only thing I want to add. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, yeah, so just one more thing I want to mention is another good thing about the wheelchair, about the wheelchair and wheelchair exercises in general, is when you're standing up and you're trying to learn how to walk, obviously we mentioned that there's a risk of falling, um, and this comes hand in hand with your knee wanting to hyperextend for those uh, stroke survivors who, who are – who are going through that uh, stage of their recovery now. The good thing about wheelchair exercise is that if you're doing a uh, exercise such as a sit-to-stand or a squat, you have some reassurance because you can use your non-affected hand to reach back and stabilize yourself by putting it on the uh, arm of the wheelchair so that you can teach your brain how to uh, calibrate and, re and correct its sense of balance, especially when you're coming from a... Uh, position where where you might not feel very stable and this might be because you might feel that your knee might hyperextend when you're standing up um, which i know happens to a lot of stroke survivors or it might be because because you just don't have enough confidence to put enough weight on your affected leg in those early days of your recovery after stroke so i guess that's 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 everything i want to mention on my end um, and i really hope that uh, everyone watching this really takes some of the things that Ralph and I said to heart and really apply this in your recovery after stroke and use and use this as part of your stroke recovery toolbox because we really do want the best for those who are watching this uh, these 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 roadmaps these roadmaps were designed um, to help provide stroke survivors with the support which they deserve so that they can get the most out of their recovery without having to reinvent the wheel um, by by cutting the learning curve, by learning learning what has actually been shown to work in recovery after stroke and get results in recovery after stroke so that when you do travel the journey by yourself, then you, then you know why it is that you're succeeding and what you need to do to continue to move the needle forward in your recovery after stroke so you can reach your recovery goals a lot quicker. Okay, well, I just have one more thing I didn't mention, and these guys are um, uh, 
They're not related to walking. They're probably the best thing you can buy for three bucks in recovery. Uh, it's a little, um, basically, it's a lump of uh, nylon that fits through a door. This goes on the other side of a door. The door fits like right here. And it makes a loop on this side of the door. And you can slide it up and down on the door at various heights. I've got a little piece of there of round band in here to put, you can put bands right through here, or I've got a, another band here. You can put uh, TheraBand through there or one of those round bands with the handles. And now if you got this, you know, the doors over here, and you got the TheraBands, you're doing stuff like you can pull in various directions. If the door's in front of you, you can do it that way, that way, all, all kinds of things. So these door anchors are one of the best uh, things you can get for, uh, for recovery, in, in my opinion. So, and they open up a whole new world of upper, uh, of arm arm strength and arm movement exercises for you if you happen to still be in a wheelchair. So obviously, you know, we hope, like William said, we hope you get something out of this. The thing that I would suggest would be to um, realize that even if you're in a wheelchair, you can do what you, you can do things that you need to do to, to build up muscles to see if you can't uh, speed up the process of getting out of that wheelchair. So Unless you have anything else, William, um, we'll, I guess we'll see everybody next time. And thanks for your time. Yeah, no worries. Uh, nothing else to add. Thanks, Ralph.